court has. Yeah. Will that work? No, I don't think that's going to work. Well, you got other it gear? It looks like you're going to a gunfight with a knife. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've got gear. That's, that's not going to do the job. It looks like it's working? It's working fine. We're going to be in good shape. We don't have to worry about the battery running and down to, on the radio. Yeah, we're going to be able to play the stereo all day. We're going to have some good fun. We'll get our buddy and see if he'll go with us. I don't think that'll be a problem. Well, it's a great day. Let's go ahead. we got the shop cleaned up. We'll lock up, unhook that water. We'll hook up here and let's go fishing. All right. We've run out of time again. We'll see you next time here at Two Guys Garage. I wonder when the last time the wheel burns were packed in this thing. Hey, we're about ready to go up here. How much do you have to do back there? Wait, wait a minute. I gotta clean this mess up. You gotta help? There we go. Hey guys, we got a little bit more to do to clean up before we hook up and go. Now, what's this weed stuff? We got our deal done. Stop clean. All yours out here, Dave. Oh yeah, right. Boy, some things never change. Just seven days ago at Lake Erie, Kevin Sawinski, the Big Red One, and Mike Garvey's Black 17 battled back and forth for supremacy, only to come together at the end in a controversial move that resulted in disgust and denial. Next week, go to Mansfield. I guess there's an apron there. I'll just run in there and bounce off the side of everybody, too. We've rubbed and, and stuff, and hopefully ain't too mad, but, uh, you know, that's just been short track racing. So what's up next for this short tracks and shorter temper syndrome? Well, a year ago at Mansfield, home of tonight's event, Sawinski dominated with a classic short track masterpiece. So expect the gloves to be coming off because ASA will be getting it on next here, live on Speed. For the second consecutive year, the American Speed Association returns to the still new but state-of-the-art Mansfield Motorsports Speedway for the BF Goodrich Tires 250. This year it's the fifth round of the national championship chase, but we have to go back after what happened at Erie even further to Montgomery, Alabama, May 6 of 2001. Sawinski number one, Garvey number 21, teammates got together there. Garvey forced down onto the dirt. Sawinski goes around. This story continues to develop. With more on that, let's get down to the grid with Ken Stout. And of course, the champ earned his first win of the 04 season just one weekend ago, and it came right after a controversial pass on a former teammate, Mike Garvey. Kevin, you've had a week to think about that pass. Do you still feel comfortable with it? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, you know, that's just good pulling in short track racing. I wouldn't expect anything different here tonight. On the other side of this controversy in this dog fight is my colleague, Dave Burns. The competitive fire in Mike Garvey burns even hotter after last week's incident. Nobody wants to finish second, especially to a guy who, as Greg already mentioned, he doesn't particularly like. So, Mike, the question is, uh, how deep are the issues between you and Kevin, and how long do we look for payback to be an issue between you two? Well, there are no issues. I mean, we're just racing. Uh, all I can say is if it comes down to us two at the end of the race, then go to the refrigerator. <laughs> Stay tuned, keep watching, don't go away if the 17 and the 1 are competing for the win. Greg? Thanks very much, Dave, and welcome, everybody. I'm Greg Creamer. Joining me tonight is Rob Albright. Don't go to the refrigerator. I think that's exactly what we're talking about here. But even though that was the battle to watch because it was for the lead, it wasn't just those two that were involved in dust-ups. No, area. no, Greg, you're right. You know, on-track feuding is not just the private domain of a couple of ex-teammates. A couple of drivers who are comrades off the racetrack, Mike Cope and Travis Kittleson, got into it big time. Maybe this was the most obvious one last week. Watch this. Kittleson to the inside, tries to get past Cope. Mike turns left, says, you ain't going to do it, kid. And let's look at it again. Whose fault was it? I don't know, but this had been going on for a long time before it finally ended that way. Great. They just ground on each other, and now with more on that story, back down to Ken Stout, who's with Mike Cope. Well, without a doubt, guys, if controversy is your cup of tea, then you want to keep your eyes on the 25. He struggled with some of the young guns in this series. Casey Smith a little bit earlier in the year. Kittleson we talked about, and also Wade Day. Talk to me about these young guns. Well, I don't know if i got a problem with any of the young guns t per se, but in this politically correct world of racing, I'm just not afraid to speak my mind. And some of these cats just got a little bit more race card than they got ability at times. There's some really good young racers out here, but uh, they need to take a, a little bit of advice from the older guys. And hey, man, you got to be around there at the lap 250 to get the money. Dave Burns is over with Travis Kittleson. And there's no doubt that there was contact between these two, heavy contact. But you know what? They actually like each other. Mike Cope and Travis Kittleson trade ideas about setups on the cars all the time. So, Travis, is the relationship intact? And do you have any kind of a bullseye on Mike's car? Uh, absolutely not. Me and Mike talked about it, and uh, we got it straight. Uh, we have an understanding, and uh, uh, we come to the agreement that uh, he owes me one. <laughs> All right, well, he owes him one. Let's stay trackside for the words. We'll get this race started. And it's your turn. 
Gentlemen, start your engines. Let's go racing! Well, the gentleman ushering those words, Rusty Bell, who happens, by the way, to be racing this weekend in a national over at Mid Ohio, so he's busy. Here's Robbie Pyle, your pole sitter, Janet King Pole Award winner, a thousand bucks, and if he sweeps it, takes the win, he gets five thousand dollars from the rollover money. You've got a yen or a hankering to go to the fridge? Don't do it. You can't protect it, but now you can fix it. With Duplicolor's new Scratch Fix 2-in-1 Touch-Up Paint, the innovative ballpoint applicator keeps the factory match paint flowing evenly, while the tapered brush is perfect for larger chips. Get your color of Scratch Fix 2-in-1 at auto parts stores and leading retailers, because you're going to need it. Next up, it's more Midwest short track action for the ASA National Tour with 300 grueling laps at the historic Berlin Raceway in Marne, Michigan on Saturday, June 12th. Yeah. Then the series heads west as the ASA makes its debut at the One Mile Oval at Pikes Peak International Raceway on a special July 4th race day. Order your tickets for both races by calling 1-888-272-1020 or log on to ASARacing.com for more information. ASA Racing, we built champions. There is one question on the minds of those who ride with the wind. How do I get to adventure? They get there in the durable, great-looking Featherlight trailer. Extraordinary aluminum trailers for bikes, ATVs, cars, snowmobiles, anything you need to haul. Featherlight gets you and your high performer where adventure begins. Featherlight where there's a trailer for every need and every adventure. Call for a free action packet and discover the Featherlight difference. Speed Channel's live coverage of the ASA Racing BF Goodrich Tires 250 is being brought to you by BF Goodrich Tires, the official tire of ASA, and by Janet King, the king of clean. Welcome back, everybody. Cars rolling off in the pace and parade laps. And Rob Albright, let's get right to the description of this race and the race analysis. Mansfield Motorsports Speedway, a nifty little half mile oval, turns six, banked at 16 degrees. The straightaway is very slightly banked at 8 degrees. Of course, the race length, 250 laps, 33 starters, just a tad under $200,000 at stake tonight. The mandatory pit stops tonight, two of them, Greg. Every driver has to make two. 100 laps of green flag racing means a competition yellow. Yeah, fat chance we're going to go 100 laps without a caution. Exactly. Well, we're about to go racing, so let's get you right to the starting lineup. We take a look at our first couple rows of the grid. We mentioned already Robbie Pyle on pole, Travis Kittleson away day on row two, but Chris Stump is the driver who had one of the best qualifying efforts of his career, and it was a big rebound from last week. Uh, the guys, uh, they, they put it in all week. We had to put a clip on the car, this being our only uh, car we have. And uh, bringing uh, modern office methods on board this week, we wanted to put on a good show, and uh, we pulled out a good lap. We go now to rows three and four, which we had a look at. Joey Logano, what a story there. Stephen Light, Jay Middleton. And for Butch Miller, well, tonight, the number 52 on the side of his car has a more dubious significance, perhaps, than it's ever had before. You know, everybody keeps reminding me about that, and I'm not real happy about it, to tell you the truth. They say happy birthday. Well, it's really just a birthday. And today, my, my age matches my car number. Oh, he doesn't like that. Rose, five and six. We're going to see Brian Refter, the 95 champ, rookie Rich Locke. Last week's pole sitter, Brett Sontag, and Mike Garvey, one of the focuses of the incident. Starting right next to him, essentially, Kevin Sawinski in row seven and eight, joined by Gary St. Amant, making his return, Peter Casalino. And for rookie Gary Sherman, he hopes to repeat the form we saw from him last week. Yes, we did. I tell you, we led like 20 laps or so and had an excellent performance. We're looking for the repeat performance tonight. I know we can do it. We got an excellent car. Put her up front. 
Rose 9 and 10 will be Ryan Matthews and Todd Cleaver with Brent Downey and Mike Eddy back once again. Great to see that. We go to Rose 11 and 12. Casey Smith, 7 to the points. Mike Cope back in the order a bit. Tim Sauter back in there. And for Reed Sorensen, well, he was on the pole here last year, but frankly, he struggled this season. Yeah, we were the second car to go out and qualifying, and uh, I think that hurt us pretty bad, but we got a good race car. We're going to use pitch strategy to get us up to the front. We should be there by the end of the night. That's sort of been the way their season has gone so far. Rose 13 and 14. Jeff Harrison and Greg Stewart, 13th in the points. Trevor Stewart and Kyle Krisiloff. Then Rose 15 and 16. Chad Wood, who just ran the late model race. Ed Brown, Toby Porter buried in the back. Ronnie Holly, and all alone with a provisional start, Joey Miller, who just had an abysmal qualifying effort. Now we're going to go on board and give you a look at where we're going to be watching, and it should be chock full of excitement. First of all, we'll be with Joey Miller, the number 15 country to home Chevy, back in 33rd. You know he's going to come up to the pack, and it should be aggressive and fun to watch. Uh, starting in the 31st spot, number 11, Toby Porter, the Meyer Chevrolet. He should be somebody on the move early as well. And then qualified 25th, number 82, is Jeff Harrison, the Royal Purple Chevrolet. He's back in the order now. He's a road race for making one of his relatively few starts so far in the series. And I think he's going to be a lot of fun to watch as well. Let's go down to uh, the pit lane now. Ken Stout, what's happening down there? Hey, guys, I think we got to talk about the parity of the cars that we've had all season long. We've had some brutally tough races, but if you take a look at the winners, you'll see that there was four different winners. We've had four, actually five different pole setters now. And at the halfway mark, we've also had four different competitors there. It's truly been pretty impressive. Let's go to Dave. Well, Ken, Rob mentioned earlier the rule in ASA, which requires each team to make two stops. That was established last year about this time, and Kevin Sawinski and crew were really the first ones to think, you know what, if we pit early both times and beat everybody out and get track position on a track that's very hard to pass on, we might just win. And they did. They dominated this race last year, but more importantly, they pitted early and got out front and stayed out front. I think we'll see that again tonight, guys. All right, thanks very much, gentlemen. You see Robbie Pyle has elected to start from the outside, so Chris Stump looks like he's on pole, actually qualified second. Great effort there, and uh, I think this is going to be just another brutal war here. But one thing I noticed is there is a quick lane around the outside of this track. I think we're going to see uh, some guys using that to great effect. It seemed that way in practice, Greg. And you know, I think qualifying really not indicative of who may be strong. The first 10 guys qualified under the heat of the sun, and they're back in the pack. This will be good. And it starts now, green flag, 250 laps underway here in Mansfield, down into turn one. And very quickly, Stump driving away. Pyle's choice to start outside, not paying off too good. Number 30 there is Kittleson, working the outside as point leader, number 96, Wade Day. And that maroon car, and he slips down into third. And it looks to me like Kittleson getting freight trade badly. He goes wide. Wow, Stephen Light forced to go way wide to avoid contact, but we have it a little bit deeper in the pack. Unbelievable, Mike Eddy wow. involved once again in that moment, and I didn't quite pick up the number of the other car, but Mike Eddy, if you watched last week, he was not happy with some of the driving going on in the series last year, and this happened to him very early at Erie. He's got to be just boiling underneath that mask. You, you would think so. You know, Mike Eddy, of course, a seven-time ASA Series champion, returns after a rather lengthy hiatus. It's been a new and improved Mike Eddy, if you will. He's been pretty jovial, pretty laid back, but, you know, he said, you know, these guys, they need a good talking to, some of these young guys. He said, they just can't turn me around like that. The old Mike Eddy would not have even made that statement. He'd have just simply gone back out and retaliated. He bet. He'd have gone out and driven right through him and made his point that way. Watch for it right there. And uh, that is, oh, the K. That's the number 12, young Ryan, Ryan Matthews. Matthews. And obviously, Mike Eddy, simply a victim there. He was just yeah. running a smooth line, as you said, about two-thirds of the way up off the white line. Got collected by huh, a rookie. All right, well, one of the things that we've done here is, uh, if you've been watching all year, we asked drivers to give us a little information going to break. Well, after what we've been watching, it's been what's rubbing and what's wrecking, what's acceptable. Well, tell you what, we're going to hang in here because we've got stops. We have stops early, and again, they have mandatory stops, Rob, and uh, obviously some strategy being played out here. Here comes the uh, pole sitter, Robbie Pyle, the Sitco machine, and and that was a, they put in the slightest flash of fuel and let him go. So that was a almost just a stop and go, which is you could do. That's Listen. legal. That's yeah. legal. For those of you who are watching an ASA race for the first time, you may either add fuel, you may change two tires under caution, you simply cannot do both. Sawinski chose to put in just a little bit of fuel, and you know that almost might be enough to get him the full rest of the distance. They about all said, 
right side tires will be needed before the conclusion tonight. All right, strategy playing out early. Now, once again, as we said, we asked the drivers, what's acceptable? What's rubbing and what's wrecking? Well, we asked the guy on pole, and it seems only fitting to talk to him first. Here's what Robbie Pyle had to say. I suppose a uh, guy is going to try to get by with whatever he can get by with. So uh, crossing the line is when you make another guy mad enough that he wrecks you right after that. Or uh, the next week, you might have to put up with the same thing. So uh, all is fair with a few laps to go, I guess. But uh, there's always a price to pay for that stuff, too. OnStar equipped 260 horsepower SRX V6 performance SUV. Cadillac, breakthrough. Hey, Greg White here. On the next Two Wheel Tuesday, we head off to an elementary school to teach kids the competition of trials. And remote control motorcycles? That's Two Wheel Tuesday, Tuesday, 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific, only on speed. At Progressive, we think shopping for car insurance should be easy. That's why at Progressive.com, we give you our direct rate for car insurance and the rates of our competitors. So it's easy to get the right policy at a great price. We can help you save money, even if it's not with us. For over 65 years, we've been changing the way people think about car insurance. See for yourself at Progressive.com or call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. Think easier. Think Progressive. At Progressive, we think car insurance claims should be easy. That's why we assign you a dedicated claims representative to help you from start to finish, so you always know what's going on with your claim. We even guarantee repairs for as long as you own your car. For over 65 years, we've been changing the way people think about car insurance with great rates and personal helpful claim service. Visit Progressive.com or call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. Think easier. Think Progressive. Welcome back, everybody. Well, there's somebody who's bundled up. Well, uh, he must be a little chilly, but we want to go back, and you saw that pit stop sequence. A lot of guys taking advantage early of strategy for Kevin Sawinski. He got the stop done, but it wasn't without a bit of histrionics here. Watch this. It's a pretty close call. He's coming in, and ooh, just tapped. And 38, Joey Logano, who is uh, a young story we're going to be following as we watch him right here. He did a pretty nice job of uh, reading that after he'd been waved out. Now, let's get down to Ken Stout. Uh, we talked about these early stops. Ken, obviously some strategy on the play. Well, no question, guys. And I, I think you've really got to take a look at the entire picture, the fact that this track is very hard to pass on. And pretty much any driver will tell you that they love it here. It's fast, but it's hard to pass on. With that in mind, they're going to come down and get their pit stops taken care of early. A quick stop and go. Their theory is get to the back of the pack early in the race, so you only have to fight your way up to the front one time all night long. Let's go to Dave. You know, Ken, some of our viewers may wonder if Chris Stump actually jumped that start of that race. They were told, according to his crew chief, Tommy Simpson, in the driver's meeting, that they could start any time they were past the restart line. Chris was past that line when he stood on the gas. Guys? Well, when you're told the rule, you take advantage of it, and obviously uh, he got a better run Ready. coming up to the line, and that's what paid Ready. off. Listen for it. It's the crew Ready. radio. Green, 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 green. Green. Clear all green, out. out. And we are back and underway, working lap number 10. Nine complete. Early going, Chris Stump continues to lead. Wade Day, though, taking a run. Got a good run down low. And coming down in, we've got a yellow. And, oh, the number 37 involved. That's Ronnie Hawley. And there were a couple other cars that were sort of, I don't know that they were into it much more than just having to dynamite the brakes and slowing way down. But uh, Winona, Minnesota's Ronnie Hawley problems early. Yeah, Ronnie's first start of the season. He came a couple of times last year, missed shows, and it looks like he's got some problems very early in the going. Chris Stubb, what a difference, Greg, a year makes. Yeah. Last season with a different team, finished 30 in this race, struggled all year long, flew under the radar. He's got Glenn Allen as a team manager now, and it's made all the difference. It certainly has. Let's take a look at what unfolded here. And ooh, he got some help, didn't he? Yeah, that looks That's like Travis Kittleson, Kittleson one oh. of the guys that stopped and damage to the left front of Mike Garvey's car. Wow, that was that was major for Garvey. Yeah, he climbed up over that other car, and that left front corner is very suspect. There you get a look at it. Right there, see the serious left damage. Corner of Mike Garvey's car. And uh, he's well, you can see he's got some toe problems. They normally run a lot of positive 
Camber on that side. You can see he's sweep, or swerving it back and forth pretty heavily, just trying to check it out. But he's got to come in and get that check. Looking again at Joey Logano, who qualified very, very well, has slipped back in the order just a little bit, obviously due to being one of the drivers in that pit stop sequence. And it looks like he's thinking about maybe coming in again. Garvey down on the apron, making his way in, and that is a big concern. Keep in mind, Garvey, one of the front runners in the points, second in the points, one at Lanier, and has been uh, right up in the front in most of the other races. And this is huge. It certainly is for Mike Garvey. The question is, how bad is the damage? Is it cosmetic and superficial, or is it something that could affect his performance? Dave, do you, can you help us with that? Well, as he was coming in, Mike Garvey radioed to his crew, I think everything's fine. The damage mostly cosmetic on the left front, but Mike working the steering wheel, feeling the car out, he believes that it's okay. So they're just going to try to repair some damage here. Probably put on two tires if they make another stop before they go back to green, guys. Yeah, laying down a lot of that uh, race tape, but I noticed too that uh, instead of the race tape, they're using bungee cords as well. Let's go to Ken. Yo, know, guys, Toby Porter came in here. It looked like he wanted fuel. He could not get in. About the time he got to his pit stall, Reed Sorensen was pulling out. Reed Sorensen actually went to the inside of Toby Porter. They never had a chance to get fuel inside of the car. I guess technically it'll be called a stop and go. Well, yeah, he'll, he'll get a stop out of the way, but it certainly probably isn't what he wanted. Now, we've been chatting a little bit about the Joey Logano. Well, he's an example of the youth movement that we're seeing in racing these days taken to the extreme. And earlier, Dave Burns gave us that story. Forgive Joey Logano if he doesn't spend his summer vacation fishing or camping or playing baseball, because you see, this young teenager is a racer, and he, Joey, can we... Can we interrupt you for a second here? Yeah. He is in his first national tour race with the ASA tonight. Are you more nervous or more excited to start this race? I think I'm more excited. Uh, it seems we have a pretty good car. Last practice we picked up quite a bit, and uh, hopefully we'll be pretty good. You got your start in what kind of racing, Joey? Uh, we started quarter midgets in Connecticut. Then we moved down to Georgia, and uh, we did Bandoleros, Legends cars, Allison Legacy cars, uh, late models, and now we're in ASA. He's got a lot of experience. Now, last week in a late model race, he ran up front. He drove aggressively. In fact, so aggressively, the officials kind of got mad at him. I think he's got a real future. There is no question. He is brutally quick, for uh, certainly for his age. And keep in mind, folks, he qualified fifth here tonight. So his first ever national tour stop. Now, here's Reed Sorensen. And you heard the report about what happened down in the pits. Well, here it is. Watch what happens here. There is Sorensen, and there is what he happened with Porter. Sorensen able to get out. Porter got over there. They did get some fuel in, but uh, if they'd wanted to do tires, that wasn't going to happen. But, oh, boy, that's close. Greg, these aren't particularly short pit boxes. They're good-sized pit boxes, but this just shows you the potential downside of this early race pitting strategy, trying to get things out of the way. You really put yourself at risk on pit road. Well, and obviously the driver gets waved out by one of the crew members, and they just didn't realize communication issues. Exactly, that uh, that Toby was going to be making that line down into the pit lane, and for Chris Stump, he's getting shown by uh, so far leading a lot of laps. And there's Garvey again, a lot of that racers tape and that bungee cord just across to keep that hood pinned down. And uh, I guess the question here would be on this track, it's a half mile, a little bit longer than the than the uh, 3 eighths mile that we ran last week. How much will that affect the aero? I, would, I mean, it's a quick track. Aerodynamics are not particularly significant. No. However, if one of those pieces comes off or the hood comes up, boy, that could really be a problem for Garvey. Back into green flag racing, or the other thing is sometimes you get a front end wrinkle like that, it messes up the ducting either to the engine or to the brakes. And uh, that's something to keep an eye on as well. But back to green, Stump leads it. Wade Day, the maroon and yellow car right behind him. Then it is 52, Butch Miller. Miller, one of the most savvy drivers out there, obviously, and electing not to go to that early pit stop sequence. And it uh, leapfrogged him up just a bit. Interesting, a couple of youngsters up front being Stump and Wade Day, a couple of veterans behind Butch Miller and right behind him runs uh, Brian Refner, a former champion. He struggled in qualifying. He was fastest in practice. There you can see him, the right side of your screen. Almost spun in qualifying, but said we've got a strong car for the races. He makes the pass on Butch Miller. Oh, I think Miller looked like he suddenly slowed down. I don't know whether he suddenly had a problem, but he moved to the inside. Oh, now he's back up, tucks back in behind Refner. And folks, it makes me very happy to say this. When we go back and take a look at what's happening in fifth spot, you are gonna see Gary St. Amant in the top five 
and it is great to be able to say that name in ASA National Tour Racing once again and up near the front. But this battle is starting to heat up. Wade Day starting to go after the number eight of Stump. And, you know, we were watching the late model race a little bit earlier today, and coming out of turn two, a lot of guys doing what Stump was there, diamonding in and then getting way high off the exit. And you'd think, oh, big opening there, but there's some bite up there that's allowing them to just sort of rim shot and get a great drive out of the turns. Wade Day has really impressed me. In fact, most of the veterans have not been at all critical of his driving style. They've said that he's raced smooth, he's raced smart, races like a veteran, and he's showing a lot of patience, even though it would appear, Greg, he's got a quicker car than the race lead. Well, prior to the race, you and I were just chatting a little bit about some stuff that we've noticed during the year with all these incidents we've been having and the complaints about some of the rookies in the light. One of the things I've been noticing is that some of these young guys, when somebody's outside them going into a turn, it's like they take the bait and they run in a little too hot and they push in and hit the other guy. Wade Day has not been a driver who has shown that foible. And Ken Stout, he is uh, also showing some great patience right now. Well, from what I understand, this car is very good on long runs, and this is exactly what they were hoping for. A lot of green flag laps without the yellows, of course. And on a side note, I've got to tell you, a couple of players for this team, including the crew chief, Larry Carter, they get a bonus if the car finishes in fifth place or higher. So from what I understand, they actually had a talk with Mike Cope saying, I hope you're not carrying any grudges over into this race because it wouldn't be good. Guys? Ah, it's amazing the motivational factor oh, yeah. of the potential damage to a pocketbook. So they go over and chat with the driver. And Wade Day, though, he doesn't really need that kind of chat. He's a pretty savvy driver of his own note. And uh, he's sitting and hunting down Chris Stump early going here at Mansfield. supplies and advice you need to keep your car running right there's no better place than AutoZone. asaracing.com is your source for all the news and notes from the american speed association look up schedules driver bios statistics history and track information along with research on the rest of the asa racing family check out and buy asa fan gear only at asaracing.com to order tickets by phone, call 1-888-272-1020. That's 1-888-272-1020. ASA Racing, we build champions. Welcome back, everybody, to Mansfield Motorsports Speedway. BF Goodrich Tires 250. We are under caution, and uh, this is one of the drivers involved, the number 15 of, uh, 57, excuse me, of Gary Sherman, who, again, led a few laps at Erie, was really looking to be able to repeat that form and uh, had a problem early. He was involved with the number 44 of Peter Casalino, and uh, so that's why we're, but both of them really got away out of it pretty clean. Now, here's a good look, as I said, at Gary St. Amand currently running up in the top five and we've been wondering this year, with her St. Amant, what's he been up to? Well, Ken Stout talked to him a little bit earlier about his season. One year ago, here at Mansfield, Gary St. Amant's car did not look anywhere near this good at the end of the evening. He was in a violent wreck with Stephen Light, and there's no question he was not a happy camper as his night ended early. So where has Gary St. Amant been all season long? We haven't seen him, but he's back now. And Gary, of all places, why Mansfield? 
Well, you know, it's kind of a home turf for Gary St. Amon. You know, being Columbus, I'm an hour away from home. And, and also we brought jigs.com on for this, this weekend here. And it's kind of like a home racetrack for them too. How do you feel your chances will be not running here all year? Well, you know, we, we had a pretty good car in practice on old tires, and uh, we put some new tires on right there at the end and actually slowed the car down. So we're a little worried here, but uh, hopefully we can find something and get us up to the front there by the end of the night. One thing's for sure, this field is littered with former champions. This is one of them. Don't ever count him out. That is a fact. Meanwhile, we have got some serious pit stop action, and uh, one of the drivers coming in is 52, Butch Miller and Wade Day. And let's go down to Ken, who's in Butch's pit. Butch Miller coming in for the first time tonight. He'll take on fuel. Also, Brett Sontag will take on fuel. That is Brett's second stop of the night, so he is good for the rest of the run, guys. And you see uh, Wade Day also made a stop from second place, and there's 17, Garvey who obviously came in. So for a number of these drivers, the two mandatory stops, Rob, are done. Now, whether they can make it on tires that are gonna survive, obviously they can get to the end on the tires, but are they good? And fuel, I guess it all depends on what we have for caution. Most of the drivers who indicated that, uh, that, that there were two mandatory stops, they said at least one of those two stops would be for right side tires, almost to a man. They were in accord on that. So I think even those that have a, made a second stop break, I think we'll see them back on pit road for right sides. All right, still need to have that stop perhaps here. Here is the number 52 of Butch Miller, who completed his stop and is back out. And uh, by the way, that puts Chris Stump back in the lead. And uh, I don't know that uh, he, did, yes, he did stop. So obviously the sequencing has gone through and Stump finds himself back up front. What a great run for him. And as you talked about, uh, Glenn Allen Jr. And I mean, there's the modern office methods connection that, uh, that they came along. But uh, Glenn Allen always ran pretty well here. And uh, he's a good guy to have in your ear. I told a lot of folks that Chris Stump would be somebody to watch this season. About everywhere he went, he was a track champion, he set track records, and I knew, given the right group of people around him, he was capable of running up in front, and that's, he's proving that here tonight. So the current order, by the way, is Stump, then Refner. St. Amant now has moved to third. Sodder is up into fourth on the heels of his fourth place finish last weekend. And Mike Eddy, that early spin and contact and all, now trying to play the strategy a little bit. And there he is, right, just coming into your screen, that green liveried white machine, finds himself now up in the top five. Pace car is in, so Stump going to bring him around. We'll be completing our 38th lap of 250 as he comes around. And he looks like he's very good coming off a of cold tires, so uh, watch for him to have a good run here. He's got a pretty savvy driver and Raffer behind him. And as we come around for the green, enjoy the sounds of speed. here as you ride on board there with Toby Porter. There is Stump, and you can see just how close Refner is running him. We saw this earlier with, with uh, Wade Day as he was able to get down underneath him, but Stump would always drive by him. But Dave Burns right now, Refner looks to have a better car down low. He has a really good car, Greg, and I talked with Carl Hartman, his crew chief, about their weekend. They had a test day yesterday, and they ran great. So today, they experimented. Yeah, they weren't so great, so they went back to where they were Friday. That's a setup that Brian really liked. Started him a little loose, and Carl just told me the car is perfect right now. Craig, you really need to be able to use the whole racetrack. You can see that Refner may have a quicker car than Stump. He can get underneath him, but he needs to be able to roll up the banking in one, in two, one and two as well as three and four. You can see the wiggle, the twitch. The car gets loose when he rides right alongside Chris Stump. That's why he's not able to complete the pass, and it makes for some great side-by-side -side racing. And that's where that high line we were talking about when they diamond in early and then they float up high and almost square off and get that bite up on that banking. When you're on the outside in this situation, that may be actually the better line to run. But boy, Refner is being persistent and is continuing to force the issue. And that may have done it. Stump floated out a little high indeed. Refner comes by and here comes Sauter. Boy, he just drove down deep, deep, deep into that turn. Nose is ahead of Stump, and look at Mike Eddy. Great to see him back at Racy, taking a look at Stump as well. I think Tim Sauter, Greg, is back to stay. Of course, he was the 1999 champion, has struggled in his return to ASA. I talked to him before the race, and he said, it's just a lot of little things that have changed. I'm beginning to get them one at a time. I think we're going to be a threat from here on out, and he's proving again this evening. There's Stump on the outside, the McDonald's number eight. That's Eddy. 
who well was down underneath him and now tucks in behind him just a little bit behind him is 74 Jay Middleton young rookie with a pole this year in Kentucky and then Robbie Pyle. Robbie Pyle is beginning to make his way up through the field of course he has stopped so uh, he's uh, making his way back through traffic after being deep in the field. Robbie, who has struggled, as we alluded to at the outset of this uh, broadcast, struggled early in the season. A lot of people thought he was going to be the guy to beat for the title. Good racing back in the pack. There he is Pyle. Look at Eddie once again working underneath Stump. That time you get a little too wide down there. And not only Stump able to go through, but Middleton. Let's get down to Ken with uh, a little information on Mike Eddie. What's up? What's up? You know, he's not, he's a man of very few words. You don't get a whole lot out of him, but I did get a chance to talk to him, and he said, I'm hungry. That's pretty much the deal. I'm, my head's back in this game, and I want to win it bad. He said, a lot of people say you can't pass here at this track. He said, they're wrong. You just got to set your car up to run both sides, guys. Well, he was absent for two years, came back last week, and he got beat up just a little bit. I bet he's hungry. This is a guy who lived and lives for racing. There's our leader, Brian Reffner, continuing to lead, about to complete the 50th lap. He's a veteran with a lot of experience. We had to ask him that question. What's rubbing and what's wrecking? When you're trying to pass somebody and, and you can't get it done and you're way faster and the guy's blocking, you know, it, it's only fair to get around him whatever way you can. But if the guy's racing you fair, giving you a line, and you just flat run into him, that ain't racing. For dry, red eyes, clear eyes is awesome. It removes redness and has an ingredient to moisturize. Wow. The difference is clear, clear eyes. How do you keep a car from ending up like this? Try armor. Armor all protected. It does more than clean and shine. It protects. I want a data race car driver. Premieres Wednesday night, 8 Eastern, only on speed. This is an absolute flat out 24 hour sprint. We could be witnessing an historic day. The Michelin 24 Hours of Le Mans, next Saturday, exclusively on speed. Monday on speed, NBS 24 7. It's too bad as many laps as I turn to make that mistake, hit the wall, and just uh, screwed up. I'm kind of changing a little bit of being a little more relaxed. NBS 24 7, Monday night, 8 Eastern, only on speed. At Bell, we've spent 50 years creating the most advanced helmets, and now we're bringing new cycling innovations to you. Through sophisticated research methods, we found that flat tires can create feelings of frustration. 185. 190. We're in the red zone. He's going to kill himself. This can decrease bicycling pleasure. So we created the flat blocker tube with self-sealing slime inside to instantly seal punctures. But we didn't stop there. Next, we ventured where no cycling company has dared to go before. Research showed that conventional seats can cause intense bruising and inflammation. He's in so much pain. Fascinating. So we developed the Geltech seat with three layers of comfort. To find out how to get Bell Geltec seats and flat blocker tubes, call now. No more flats, no more soreness from the innovators at Bell. And welcome back, everybody, to Mansfield, Ohio. We continue to run the BF Goodrich Tires 250. This is the battle for seven. Number 38 is young Joey Logano. Right behind him is the veteran. Oh, and here is a battle up front. That's Sauter going for the lead. The Lester Building's Ford. He's down, he's inside, and he is by Refner. So Tim Sauter, by my recollection, leading the first laps that he has so far this season. And look at sitting there in third, coming after him. I was about to say, you look at the top 10 right now in the monitor. Sauter, Refner, Eddie, St. Amon is six, Sawinski is eight. Youth movement, maybe not. Yeah, you talk about all the teenagers. There's nine championships represented right there. And of course, the guy running third owns seven of them. But certainly Tim Sauter and Brian Refner, the years that they've run in the ASA series, have found themselves at the top of the heat. What a battle. Three cars right together on that race track. Boy, this is what it is all about. Sauter, then the blue Menards entry of number 80 Refner, and then Eddie. And Ken, right now, Tim Sauter is looking better than we've seen him all year. You know, it's kind of ironic, guys. I spoke with Tim. I said, can you pass on this track? He said, no. He said, you really can't. You've got to be three tenths of a second faster than anybody else to pass here. Nobody really has that type of advantage. But ironically enough, look who's sitting out in front. Guys? 
with a great pass. And I mean, it was just a matter. And he's been, well, here comes Refter now. But one thing I've noticed about Sauter is that he seems to be able to drive down into the corner on the inside very effectively. And that's what he used to make the pass. And now Refter trying to pick up on that. Problem is, is the minute he moves inside, Eddie comes up right along the side of him and is trying to freight train him just a little bit. And Refter now tucks back in behind Sauter. And uh, that's pretty much what you were talking about a little bit. You can trap down low, you can't free up and run that old track. And Brian Refner has a very difficult decision to make. It's still early in the race, of course. Brian would like to wrestle the lead back, but he knows if he goes to the bottom, Mike Eddy will just as quickly bolt to the outside and try to tuck in behind Sauter. So Refner's the guy in the uh, precarious position. He's just sort of riding right now. The other thing is, it's very early in this race, and if you're going to use up your, your tires an awful lot, trying to just get to the front may not be worth it. Now, Jay Middleton right now running in the fourth spot, and boy, I tell you what, Ken Stout, does he have a great seat watching some of the vets? Boy, and that car has been so strong, as you know, guys. He's qualified real well with it. He's very excited about this race. He said the car's been great all weekend long. The funny thing, though, that I thought was, he said, when I go into this race, you can't be afraid to take the gloves off. So he was ready to do battle way early on, guys. You're right. I mean, that car was awfully quick at Kentucky on the super speedway and uh, ran pretty good here in qualifying as well, right up at the front. Now, Rob, we're starting to see them working some traffic. That's the 22 of Brent Downey they're coming up on. And uh, now it's outside or nothing right now. Brent really expected to have a good night. Last weekend at uh, Erie, he finished in the top 10. First time he'd even made a race this season. That team has really struggled and it appears that that struggle continues tonight. And there's a guy maybe under some pressure, Toby Porter. He uh, has not had the season that everybody anticipated. They moved this team to his home shop in South Carolina. Those just, Greg, have not yet improved from them. No, it really hasn't clicked. The guy behind him is another rookie, and that's Rich Locke, who's having a pretty good run. And then behind him is the 06 of Kyle Krisiloff, who's part of the Hendrick Drive Development Program. Is on board that car as we go right now on board with Toby Porter. You can see right now a lot of clear track, which means that they're not going that quickly right now. And that's the problem. And oh, here we go. Oh, did you see the wiggle by Refner? But he tried to still hang on to it, get by, and does. But that was what you were talking about. He was working that inside line. And boy, that front end washed out. He looked like he had to lift a little bit. The back end came around. He just flat footed and stayed with it. That move was an instant replay of his second qualifying lap. If you saw it, he gathered it in. I asked him post qualifying, when's the last time you ran on dirt? He said, just about an hour ago. So he's done it again in the race. He knows he can do it now if he has to. He quickly gets uh, a couple of lengths over Sodder, floats up wide. Here comes Mike Eddy. Trying to run that low line down low. Couldn't quite get it done, but Eddie is hunting right now. There he goes. He squares up hard. Boy, was that an aggressive move, and it planted him inside. Now the question is, can he drive it down deep? He doesn't. He, oh, boy, because he saw her floats up just that little bit right there, and that was enough. Now, sometimes when that, you know, I use the term float up, but I think sometimes those guys are watching the nose of that other car, and if it starts to push a little bit, they're actually moving up, and we've got a yellow Brent Sontag going around, and looks like if it was just him, he got away with it pretty clean, just does a burnout and drives away. But yellow flies anyway. And Refner continues to lead now at the 75 lap mark with Eddie in second, third is Sauter, Middleton fourth, Robbie Pyle is fifth, there is Butch Miller's pit, and there it is, the birthday for Butch Miller. We'll be right back. There's a place where the air is fresh, the wind is cool, and the curves are exciting, where all convertibles are turbocharged, and the sun has a very hard time keeping up. The all-new Saab 9.3 Convertible. This is the state of independence. And here, convertibles deliver more than just a great view. Welcome. Visit your Saab dealer today. Log on to GoArmy.com.
There's a power so awesome, so irresistible, you'll do anything to get your hands on it. Introducing Gillette M3 Power. Turn on the first micro-power shaving system from Gillette and turn on the amazing new Power Glide blades. Micro-pulses raise the hair so you shave closer in one power stroke. Feel the power of the world's best shave. New M3 Power, a Mach 3 innovation from Gillette. The best a man can get. Next up, it's more Midwest short track action for the ASA National Tour with 300 grueling laps at the historic Berlin Raceway in Marne, Michigan on Saturday, June 12th. Yeah. Then the series heads west as the ASA makes its debut at the One Mile Oval at Pikes Peak International Raceway on a special July 4th race day. Order your tickets for both races by calling 1-888-272-1020 or log on to ASARacing.com for more information. ASA Racing, we built champions. Just two editions of Wind Tunnel next week. On Tuesday night, Eddie Gossage, president of the sometimes controversial Texas Motor Speedway. And on Thursday, Dennis Anderson, who drives Grave Digger. We start at 10 o'clock Eastern time only on speed. Welcome back, everybody. We continue now to be under caution here at Mansfield Motorsports Speedway. And there's the driver who was involved, and here's what happened. You can Ooh. see it's Brett Sontag going around, but he gets a little help on the right front corner of Mike Garvey's machine. Now, we had talked earlier about Garvey being collected as a caution came out earlier, damage to the left front. Right front looks fine, and the car has been fast. Right? Has been very quick. Now, keep in mind that uh, during that sequence, Brian Reffner made a stop. Let's check in with Ken Stout. Chad Ora, crew chief, tell me what went wrong. Do you have a chance to talk to your driver? Yeah, it was one of those racing deals. We got a run on a guy and got under him, and Garv got down underneath us, and it's just one of those things. You get into the corner, not enough real estate for all the cars. Terry's Automotive Group's forward running real well. Uh, hopefully we can get back up there. We was coming that time, so. Guys? Yeah, he didn't lose. He certainly didn't lose much ground. It was a quick spin and continued. Dropped a few spots, but definitely, I mean, we've seen this year. You had the pole last weekend at Erie. When this car is dialed, it is very quick. By the way, Refner did stop, and uh, he has one of his stops now out of the way. He's one of the, the veterans who's been laying, laying low in the weeds and waiting this time. At a lot of short tracks, Greg, there is a quick line. Here, as you mentioned earlier, there are a couple of ways to get around Mansfield Motorsports Speedway, and they work equally well. But if you happen to be in the second position and you're utilizing one line, the guy in front of you is utilizing another line, it can bring you at, together at a confluence that might not otherwise happen. As you talked about, some of the drivers diamonding the corners, others just arcing the corners, and that's what can happen sometimes. I like that confluence, and I think that's very, <laughs> no, that's, that, that's a very good description of two different lines converging at a point that often promotes some conflict. Tell you what, you can stay up to date with what's going on here, and Dave Burns found out checking in on the Everybody's familiar with the ASA Fan Gear trailer. That's where you can get all your official ASA merchandise, like the beautiful T-shirts being folded up there, maybe a hat, die-cast car, a lot of cool stuff, including scanners. That's right. You can come over here, rent yourself a scanner, keep up with all the radio traffic from your favorite race team. And there's another option that you can rent here at the Fan Gear trailer. No, they're not playing with a Nintendo Game Boy. They're not playing Sonic Hedgehog. They're actually keeping up with all the current race results. All you have to do is come over here, rent yourself an iCard. They had the Game Boys available as well. Take it, stick it in just like you would a game, then push start, and you'll be able to get all the information that's available from the official timing tower here at the ASA. Keep up with all the quickest lap times, and of course, who's leading the race. It's great for kids of all ages. And as we go back to green, you can keep up with who's actually doing the reports. That was obviously Ken Stout, my bad. And we are back to green. And with all of the activities down there, James Middleton in the lead. Robbie Pyle now has moved up into second. And we have another Stop. yellow flag. Take three and that four. You're all clear. All clear. And, uh, we'll That's try and find start, out then. why. It looks like number 44, Peter Casalino. And points leader Greg oh. Wade Day was involved in that incident on the racetrack. That is not good. I mean, for Wade, obviously leading in the points right now. So uh, that is a huge issue driving the Harshberger Chevy. It's a good look at Wade Day right there. And uh, he's trying to hang in there. Now, Peter Casalino involved in that incident as well was one of the drivers we also talked about with what's acceptable racing, especially on the short tracks. 
Well, I think taking somebody out crosses the line. I mean, you spin a guy, uh, that's, that, that is definitely over the line. But I mean, it's short track racing. There's going to be contact. There's going to be rubbing. And I mean, that's just part of what we do here. And uh, I mean, as long as you don't spin a guy or take a guy out, that's all is fair in my mind. Hi, I'm Tony Little here at Hooters moments before opening up to show you how the Hooters girls lighten up. Cut down on the carbs with fresh unbreaded wings, steamed seafood, grilled fish, and great salads. You can win a trip to Miami to be a judge in the Hooters International Swimsuit Pageant with me. And you can win a gazelle at every Hooters. So come on, get on down the Hooters, lighten up like the Hooters girls do. Is that a wrap, Tony? Yeah, let's get the gazelle out of here. All new Speed Monday. When they dropped the green flag, it was a good time to start wrecking. Inside Next Hell Cup. How do you like my legs? Then. I saw them with the attitude that, hey, we can win. NBS 24-7. It's all new. Monday, 7 Eastern, 8 Pacific. Only on Speed. Speed Tuesday. A little tuning magic. And they'll take a car from stock to rock. All new tuner transformation. Then, sports car revolution. It all begins 7 Eastern, 8 Pacific. Tuesday, only on Speed. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you must be unanimous in your verdict. You see the crime. You collect the evidence. I know what I saw, and I saw those two there. You defend your view. So either you're the liar or he's the liar. Have you reached a verdict? From the producers of Homicide and Oz, see what happens behind closed doors. You know he's guilty. The Jury, a new drama premiering next week on Fox. Welcome back, everybody. We continue to run under caution here. And if you're wondering what's unfolding in Dover, you miss it tomorrow. Well, how about Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time, inside Nextel Cup. Opportunity to get all the information on what unfolded in Dover through the course of the weekend and any developments that may be coming along in the NASCAR Nextel Cup. We've got ourselves some great racing going on right here, and uh, we had a few more pit stops that unfolded. But Jay Middleton has stayed out. He now leads it with uh, Pyle in second and Kevin Sawinski in third. Dave Burns, I thought I saw the number 80 of Refner in the pits. Refner has come in for the last time. Maybe. He's in the back of the pack right now. If he gets a quick yellow, he might put on left side tires, according to crew chief Carl Hartman. He put on right sides this time, fueled the time before, and they didn't make any chassis adjustments. He's really good to go, according to Hartman. All right, so we're hearing it again, Rob. They may have two stops done already, but they're not ruling out needing to make a third maybe for one more set of tires here. That 16-degree banking's in the speed here. Uh, it'll it'll work these being good tires pretty good. And with two-thirds of the race yet to run, Greg, I think it's a safe bet that most of these drivers will stop at least once more, even if it does mean that they will have three stops at the, at the checkered flag. We go back to green, completing lap 89. Middleton leads him down into one and out of two, and boy, did he get through one and two incredibly well. There's Pyle in second, Sawinski third, Logano in fourth, and Sorensen making her first appearance in the top five. And I'm sorry, as we ride on board now with Toby Porter, who's been playing these strategies of the yellow stripes in the upper the six. Krisloff behind him, then Joey Miller dead last up into the top 10. So that's working, but that black car of Logano is a 14-year-old guy who uh, is incredible, talented. You know, we talk about some of these young records like Stephen Light, so mature in their age. Unbelievable, this Logano. You know, I call them Little League dads, and that is fathers that put their kids not necessarily on a Little League baseball team or soccer now. team. They put them in race cars now when they're seven, eight, nine years old with series yeah. like the Legends cars, the go-karts, the quarter midgets, a lot of places reasonably cost-effective place for these kids to race. By the time they're 14, like a Logano, he's a veteran driver. Well, you heard, he doesn't look like it. No, you heard him running off that list of what he's driven and what he's done. We're on board now with Joey Miller. Now we look back, you see the Arctic Cat spoiler. They get a little help from that. He's from Minnesota, so that's Arctic Cat country. And uh, right now, he is uh, running very close up behind Kyle Krisola, but he's got that 17 coming hard and scary. 
Joey is his teammate. Not saying. Garvey's trying to go on you. Well, and of course, Garvey used to drive for the team that's now owned by Joey Miller's dad. It was my, it was a, a team based in Minnesota, sold to the Millers. Joey has run this season full time as rookie here, handful of races last year. But Garvey probably doesn't even think about that as he tries to put the pressure on Joey Miller. How's that? Trying to cut a little bit. You can see Garvey wanting to be ultra aggressive. And you're listening to, that is Joey Spotter who's telling him and keeping him very well informed what Garvey's doing. Garvey taking a peek to the inside, he tucks up behind, just trying to maybe unnerve the younger driver a little bit. And for Garvey, right Don't have a car like Donald, I'm seeing a little smoke coming off of, oh, that's Kittleson taking a run at Garvey. Garvey covers that. There's a little bit of smoke on occasion coming off of that left front corner of Mike's. Obviously, it's just uh, where the body works, getting onto that tire just a smidge. And if Garvey's spotter is telling Mike who's behind him, you won't see Garvey be patient too long trying to make the move on Joey Miller. Not at all. It was interesting uh, in the early part of the show when we were talking about Mike Cope. About Mike Cope and Kittleson, and Ken said, well, these guys are actually friends. And uh, I can see why, because I think they're both very much cut from the same cloth. You know, friendships off the racetrack go out the window when you're behind right. the wheel. You're ooh, really ooh, just ooh. racing a fellow competitor and sideways for Kittleson. And Garvey, actually, Garvey was the one who broke sideways. Kittleson had to lift to avoid tagging him, and he had his back end swing around. So one thing we're seeing right now, there's little doubt these guys are on the edge, right on the limit as they're working this here. And there you see Krisiloff, then Miller, then Garvey. Right behind Garvey, dropping off just a little bit the black number 30 of Kittleson. Uh, check this out here, a little bump and go. And there's, that is Rich Locke with uh, Mike Cope. Mike Cope, no way, what a yeah. surprise. <laughs> Getting underneath him and the two touched. And it is Kyle Krisiloff there in the 06 that's holding up the freight train, if you will. This is just second, the second start of Kyle Krisiloff's young ASA racing career. So he's got a mirror full. I'm sure his spotter is telling him, maintain your line. That was Stephen Light's criticism when the two tangled last week. Well, and this is for position. So I mean, you cannot hold it against Grisseloff because this is absolutely for position. We move back up front. It, but you know what's unfolding here? Middleton still leads the Sitco Chevy of Pyle in second. Defending race champ. He won here last year. Of course, series champ Sawinski sitting in third. And uh, right now, they're racing uh, awfully close up front. Dave and these three doing a great job. And Greg, they have played their hand. All three of those cars, Jay Middleton, Robbie Pyle, Kevin Sawinski, have all made two pit stops. Do not plan on stopping again. The guys who were in the back thought about coming in for less later. These guys won't. They want to stay out front and stay there all night long. And by the way, the 38 of Joey Logano, also done pitting. He will stay out the rest of the night. Well, for Sawinski, I mean, he was the guy that really showed last year very frequently that you can run these tires a long, long time if you if you really work it the right way. And obviously, that's what they're planning to do right now. Look at that mix in the top yeah. five, Greg. Teenagers, first, fourth, and fifth. Of course, Middleton, 19 years of age, setting the pace. A great battle now shaping up for the second spot. Raya, Robbie Pyle, who finished second in this race a year ago under pressure from the guy who won it. Sawinski gets the nose underneath, and... There, I think you just saw one, two veteran drivers and one, two clean drivers. All those, you know, Sawinski showed he's willing to rub last week, but generally pretty clean drivers. And I mean, Sawinski got the run, came down inside. Pyle did not turn in on him and uh, was just able to drive a little quicker around the outside. They never touched it, didn't trade paint at all. And uh, I mean, it could be done. Middleton, as you said, continues to look very impressive up front, but the racing very close here at the Via Goodrich Tires 250. We've just gone by 100 laps. There is your top 10. We're here in this auto graveyard to demonstrate new finish, the once a year car polish. Simply wipe it on, wipe it off. No rubbing, no buffing. New finish restored a deep, hard shine even to this weather-beaten car. We polished this car with new finish and ran it through 52 car washes. Even after heavy-duty detergents and powerful scrubbing, the water still beads. New finish. Top-rated new finish available at Pep Boys, Family Dollar, True Value, Walgreens, AutoZone, Kmart, and other leading stores. Speed Channel is going to give you a shot to be the dude for a day. We're giving away a Speed Honda jacket every week. 
and the chance for one lucky dude to win a trip to Laguna Seca. Hang out behind the scenes and rock the corkscrew on their very own Honda CBR 1000 RR with race replica graphics. Tune into Two Wheel Tuesday for the weekly code word. Then enter to win at speedtv.com. Two Wheel Tuesday's the dude for a day contest. Only on Speed Channel. There are three things you can count on in life. Death, taxes, and cable rate increases. Thousands of Americans each day have realized that rising cable rates and poor service are not their only choice. People are switching to Direct TV. Switching from cable has never been easier, especially now that you can get a four-room system for free. With the Direct TV Total Choice Plus, with local channels programming package, you get over 130 channels of your favorite programming with true digital quality picture and sound. And best of all, you get your favorite local channels too. Direct TV also offers premium programming from HBO, Stars, Showtime, Cinemax, plus Sports Pack. Plus, up to 55 pay-per-view choices a day. Plus, you get your choice of the best sports programming available, including NFL Sunday Ticket, exclusively from DirecTV. Your choice has never been easier. Call now to order your DirecTV system for up to four rooms for free. That's a $299 value. And your standard professional installation is always included. Welcome back to Mansfield. Things are getting curiouser and curiouser here. We have the leaders working traffic, and for a while, number 12, who uh, is a driver who had a little problem earlier, Ryan Matthews and 82, Jeff Harrison, were side by side racing each other off the pace, and Middleton came up on them. We're on board now with Harrison, and once he and the number 12 and Matthews sort of cleared each other, things got easy, but for uh, Jay Middleton, he had to have his heart in his throat as he was working through those two. But give Jay credit. Yeah. He first showed patience, he showed restraint. And for those of you who are uninitiated in the nuances of ASA racing, the great equalizer here is the engine, what's underneath the hood. Every one of these cars has a machine that is tuned and built by Lingenfelder Performance Engineering to within a plus or minus five horsepower. They're fuel injected V8 engines. And the differences really show up in the setups of the race cars, the handling of the race cars, and the guy sitting behind the wheel. That's it. It really lets the drivers show their stuff. We just saw a great move by Reed Sorensen getting down underneath young Joey Logano and moving by him toward the right of him. And that was what, as we heard from Sorensen, that he alluded to on the grid. He had that second driver out in the heat of the day and said, man, it, our car's much better than what you saw in qualifying. And I guess so. And Ken Stout, he is proving that point right now. Gene Roberts, you guys are having a nice run here. You've got both pit stops out of the way. Can you go to the end without stopping again? Yeah, right now, everything's pretty good. Uh, the calculations we have on our field, it's going to be close, but uh, we've got enough to go the distance. They're thinking they can make it to the end. If that's the truth, guys, everybody else could be in a lot of trouble. And Reed could have his first win ever with the ASA, guys. Absolutely. I mean, look, not only look at how quickly he cleared Logano, but look at the amount of ground he has quickly now made up on that battle up front. Certainly Middleton Pyle and Sawinski are racing each other hard, and that sometimes will slow you down just a little bit because you're not always running the fastest line, and Sorensen can just let sail. But still, look at him come after him. And look at Sawinski dropping low. Once again, trying to get that run on Pyle. Coming up on traffic, and that time Sawinski went, whoa, 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 we got a lap car there. Not a good move. And got out of it immediately. And uh, just decided, nope, I'm going to wait here and just stay in form. And by the way, coming up to it, this will be the halfway of the race. And Jay Middleton, and hang on to it, is going to get the BF Goodrich tire. There it is, the cross flags. And he wins the BF Goodrich tires halfway leader award. So absolutely great job by the young rookie, Jay Middleton. And Greg, you want to talk some parity here. In five races, we've had, well, four previous ones that have run to conclusion. Four race winners, four pole sitters, and Jay now marks the fifth driver who's led at the halfway point of these five events. Yeah, it's just an amazing how close this has been running this season. It's been fascinating to watch. Sorensen on the move, and we've got, that's Miller and Krisilov, and we followed them lap after lap after lap, and apparently, finally, patience ran thin. And who's patience? Not sure. I guess we'll get another look at it, hopefully. Joey Miller packed the car up pretty aggressively, so I would just guess that it's pretty warm under the helmet in that car. I would think so. He's making his way down quickly into the pits of the Great Cliff Chevy. 
I don't see a lot of damage. I mean, there's a wrinkle on that right front corner, but the car seems to be tracking and rolling quite well. And you can see he's working the steering wheel back and forth, just trying to see if maybe the thing is out of alignment, if he's bent anything in the front suspension, an A-arm or a spindle or something of that nature. Right front tire obviously being changed, and the damage is very significant to this uh, fiberglass body, oh, composite yeah. body. Look at the marking on that tire right there. Pretty tough. We'll show you the Dave Burns was there. Greg, they're calling for a strut and an A-frame. Definitely suspension damage on the right front of that car. And, uh, you know, shame for these guys. Joey spun in his qualifying run, which sent them to the back early. Then they got their pit stop done. He was moving his way through the field. So uh, this is disappointing for them. Yeah, it's going to be a long stop because they're getting in and replacing those suspension parts. So his day effectively is done. They're going to try and get him out there. He's trying to go for that Rookie of the Year award, although it's been a tough season for him. But he's going to try and get out there and run just a little bit. Well, I'll tell you, this is when you, you think the improvements. This is when it becomes a team sport. Uh, they're doing everything they can right now. Now, there is obviously perhaps where the contretemps started. Uh, a little wrinkle to the back of the 06 car for Krisilov. Yeah, let's go back and uh, see if we can uh, retain what happened. Here. You'll be Probably. watching it with us for the first time. Down into turn one, Kyle Krisloff very oh. loose simply spins. And Joey Miller, in his defense, absolutely no place to go. We'd seen them bump and grind a little earlier, yeah. but this has nothing to do with that. Where could Joey possibly go? Right he could. He absolutely could go anywhere. And, uh, I said the patience ran thin, and that wasn't the case at all. Uh, obviously, Kyle just got loose. Joey, I think, is still pretty hot, but simply because... You know, he got taken out. And it wasn't anything that he did, obviously. Joey has never been questioned for his talent. What he has been questioned for is maybe the ability to stay focused and get a car to the end of the race. I think he felt this season that he was doing a better job of that. This absolutely was nothing that Joey Miller could have prevented, Greg. Right? No, I mean, actually, he did what he wanted to do. If it was tough to pass and to pass clean, he forced Chris off into a mistake. Unfortunately, it was so close when it happened that it caught him out at this problem. So there you go right now, 130 laps, 250 in the books here as we take a look at the current top five. And now here's the rest down to the top ten under the caution here. And we're going to have a fun look for you going to break, and it's going to be the onboard for Miller from the incident that we just saw. Take a look at this. We'll be back in a minute. For dry, red eyes, clear eyes is awesome. It removes redness and has an ingredient to moisturize. Wow. The difference is clear, clear eyes. <sighs> yeah. TGI Friday's fresh summer salads. Now there's even more to love about summer. Three great salads, three amazing flavors. Like new Atkins approved grilled buffalo chicken salad. New Mediterranean shrimp salad. And Friday's favorite, pecan crusted chicken salad. Hurry in for fresh summer salads. Now at TGI Friday's. Speed Wednesday, horsepower, Detroit style, American muscle car. Then, three teams, one goal. Find the ultimate collector car, an all new Barrett Jackson car search. It all begins 7 Eastern, 8 Pacific, Wednesday, only on Speed. Speed Thursday, from forgotten junk to cool custom rides. All new Chop Cut Rebuild. Then, Car Crazy and USAR Hooters Pro Cup. It all begins 7 Eastern, 8 Pacific, Thursday, only on Speed. Welcome back, everybody. Under caution on the big track, but hard racing on the short track here in the uh, spectator area. Boy, they having some fun. Let's get down to Dave Burns. Yeah. Quickly to Jay Middleton's dad. Scott, you've been monitoring him on the radio, talking to him. Can he hold him off? 
Uh, we think he can. Uh, he's pretty confident in the car. He was a little bit mad with the lap traffic, but he's uh, doing a good job, and he's uh, keeping his head. And as you might expect, he asked his spotter to help him out a little bit more with that lap traffic, guys. Well, I thought he handled it very well. He was patient, and obviously you can't drive just through two cars. I thought he did a great job. Boy, his car is magic on cold tires on a restart. He has done a great job of getting these races restarted. Either that or Robbie Pyle maybe has a little different gearing in his sit-go machine. And Robbie may not just be getting quite the jump that he'd like on those restarts, but Sawinski really hasn't been able to take advantage of that. And that's your top three, and then, of course, still very close. Just there he comes into frame to Sorensen. Behind him, the youngster Logano and Porter. Boy, they very quickly have opened it up over Garvey, who has fought his way, and I fought being the uh, active term here, fought his way now up into seventh. And uh, then Sontag right behind him. A great recovery from his spin earlier than Kittleson. And uh, right there, you're looking at three aggressive race back. Three guys by no means out of the line, by no means not an opportunity to win tonight. All of them still do, despite the fact they've all been involved in incidents on the race. Behind them is Stephen Light. And Stephen Light, we talked about, I mean, he was leading in the points early in the season, has had problems, got involved in an incident with Kyle Krisloff, and ended up out of the race last week in an area. And man, he wants to get a big finish back and talk about a kid who's capable. Two races in a row for Stephen Light at Kentucky. He struggled in practice, qualified just a few thousandths of a second off the pole. In fact, was passing for the lead on a restart when he slapped the outside wall and pulled tires. And then last week, a situation that really was not of his own doing, right. not of his own making. He's in that number four wall, Tom, the red car, chasing the black number 30 of Kittleson, who in turn going after the yellow number 71 of Sontag. And boy, I'm telling you, watching Kittleson, he is everywhere on that track. Ken, that car looks to be very, very quick, but he just can't get by. They came here, they tried three setups. One of the setups was from last year. The setup that they went with was some new stuff they've been working on. They actually used it a week ago at Erie. They said this car came in about 150 laps into the race and became a rocket ship. They were hoping the same thing would happen here tonight, and it looks like that's exactly what's going on, guys. Yeah, he is low, he's high, he's trying everything he can to get by Sontag. The problem is, is that he gets up on Sontag, and uh, then that run goes away and he's got to back out of it just a little bit. And look at this racing up front right now. Porter all over the back of Logano in that battle for fifth. Toby Porter now mercilessly hunting down. Joey Logano, we go on board. Toby Porter had a point to prove tonight. I talked to him before the race. He was infuriated by his qualifying lap. He was first on the racetrack. The track was slippery. He said, we have something to prove tonight and we're going to do it. And he's in the process of doing just that, Greg. Uh, but we have a caution has come out, and it is Todd Cleaver, and that's St. Amant. And St. Amant looks like he's got damage to the left rear corner of the car. Cleaver drives away, and that had to be a nasty little deja vu moment for St. Amant because it was on this very front straight last year where he had arguably the biggest wreck of his life. Probably a strange place for two to come together, but my guess is when we get a chance to look at it, it actually began back in turn number four. Gary St. Amant climbing into this Lowers Motorsports car. They struggled in practice yesterday, but certainly St. Amant, a veteran here in the American Speed Association with a couple of championships, felt that given enough time they could be competitive, and they got better as the day progressed today. Thought he might have a shot at a, at a strong run tonight. There's one of the safety crew members and the ASA taking the lead in that department as well. But this is what happened. That seven St. Amant, boom. His teammate unsighted and got touched by another car and rotated him around just a little bit. And really, it was this incident. Well, let's first check in with Dave Burns. Dave? Now, I talked to Gary a little bit earlier today about their plan. They did test this car at Columbus Speedway earlier this week. Gary said the main thing that we were working on were comfort things. The one thing I was not comfortable with was the brakes on this car. They were a little too touchy for me compared to what I'm used to driving. But other than that, he felt fairly optimistic until this point. And a test really wouldn't teach them much about this racetrack. Columbus Motor Speedway, Gary's home track, a third of a mile circle. This is a half mile, very different banking, very different configuration. And obviously Gary didn't get a whole lot of laps last year either to be able to work on that. Let's get back down to the pits this time. Ken Stout. Hey, guys, wanted to show you some tires that came off of the 52 car for Butch Miller about 80 laps into this race. You can see the numbers here. They measure wear. We've talked about that before, and you can see the wear holes. But what I want to show you is how smooth it is across here. That wear pattern is perfect, and this is off of the front of the car. So that tells us that those guys could go a long ways and quite Kevin possibly till the end of the right. race before they will need new tires. Of course, it also tells them that the setup of the car is beautiful, and of course, you also need a good driver to 
to keep those tires in good shape. But with all those things lined up, you could go to the end and still have some tires left. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think anybody's better at that than Butch Miller. We've seen him utilize that strategy to perfection. Uh, Sawinski, another guy who's awfully good at it. And uh, you're right, obviously, the setup on the car is key, but then you need a pilot who is able to keep those tires pristine, and obviously Miller doing an incredible job. Here we take a look at our defending series champ and the defending race champ here, Kevin Sawinski. You can take a look at his first four races thus far this season in that very, very aggressive win. And there's Gary St. Amant walking away right now after that incident, and obviously he's okay, but as I said, a little deja vu. Now here's what happened. Cleaver gets underneath St. Amant coming off the corner. Looked like he had a strong run. Gary had a car to his outside as well, Greg. He had no place to go. And yeah, I can understand Gary being a little concerned and a little upset and asking Mr. Cleaver what he was thinking, but you're absolutely right in that I think Todd, uh, obviously Gary had a driver to his right and maybe I think fainted a little bit to the inside and Cleaver didn't expect that. So uh, that's one of the situations here that uh, and Gary's smiling, laughing. I think he's just happy to be back and we're gonna be talking to him in a minute. You can see there, the safety crew on track. But first, let's check in with Dave uh, Burns, who I think is the guy who's found Gary St. Amant. Yeah, we talked about not talking until after 250 laps, and that didn't quite happen. What happened out there? You know, I, I, I thought everybody, you know, they, they listened pretty good in the driver's meeting there, and I, I thought we ran quite a few green flag laps, and, uh, you know, come up on a lap car there, and he uh, he just, just really didn't know where to go, and uh, I think he's kind of lost out there. But, you know, I kind of hate it for Dan Lores and the, the, all the Lores bunch, and and uh, uh, jakes.com but hey you know this is mansfield uh you know we we had wrecked a couple of cars pretty bad last year yeah, you need to come back to a different <laughs> track and rejoin the series don't you think i think that might be a good thing to do but it's a great facility i love racing here and uh one of these times we'll get him here in mansfield all right gary always a smile on his face no matter what happens guys absolutely and there he is and there's one of the wreckers now this is a very special unit and uh it's been now brought in as part of the asa safety team a little bit earlier today dave burns spent some time going over the safety team in this truck asa safety director scott isaacs had a dream for himself and for his team of traveling paramedics currently the only traveling safety team in stock car racing and that was not only to have the best people but also the best equipment for safety and thanks to Rosenbauer America they now have it this brand new Ford F550 safety truck what's well, got everything that they need back here a 225 gallon tank of fire suppressant they're going to be able to douse those flames and if they need to get into a wrecked race car they've got hydraulic rescue equipment back here a cutter a spreader a ram they're going to be able to get to these drivers because remember it's not about Scott Isaac's dreams for himself it's about the drivers in the American Speed Association, and they believe this is a great thing to have in this series. How about those uniforms? They call those guys, Greg, the killer bees. And understandably, they do a great job, and there is that vehicle backing off track. And we are going to be stepping away for just a moment here because we want to get back and bring as much green flag racing as we can. Jay Middleton continues to lead Kyle Sawinski. There's a power so awesome so irresistible you'll do anything to get your hands on it introducing gillette m3 power turn on the first micro power shaving system from gillette and turn on the amazing new power glide blades micro pulses raise the hair so you shave closer in one power stroke feel the power of the world's best shave new m3 power a mach 3 innovation from gillette the best a man can get it's an American tradition. And for over 60 years, Edelbrock has been the leader in performance parts. Edelbrock aluminum intakes are the only manifolds officially licensed by NASCAR. Made in the USA for outstanding quality and performance. For the track, the street, even off-road. Like the new Edelbrock Performer EPS delivering more horsepower and torque than other designs. Edelbrock fills them right, right here in the USA. Call now for your free Edelbrock catalog and bolt-on race-proven power. On the job site, I have to take on all the tough jobs and get them done right. So I use more than a tool. I use the Roto-Zip Spiral Saw System. Cuts plywood, cuts drywall, cuts countertops, tile, almost anything with quick clean cuts every time. And with the all new features, the original Roto-Zip just got tougher. Roto-Zip, tough enough to tackle any job. When the challenge is bigger, 
seems to get better. Here he is. Today he goes to the top of the line as he wins. The UAW 63 tries. Finally, Michael Waltrip is going to win a NASCAR Winston Cup race, winning the Daytona 500, the biggest of them all. Now down the back straightaway, Dale Jarrett, the leader, will do it today. Dale Jarrett comes off turn four, down to the line. He'll win the New England 300. Action Racing Collectibles, the choice of champions. Get a piece of history. Speed Wednesday, Auto Rotica. Every major player and more than a few surprises. Sweet, sexy, and powerful. The world's greatest auto shows, Madrid. 9 Eastern, 10 Pacific, Wednesday, only on Speed. And we are back, and we are back to green here at Mansfield Motorsports Speedway for the BM Goodrich Tires 250. And you can see number 74, Middleton. Uh, when we went green, opened it up just a little bit, and quickly Pilos reeled him back in and brought Sawinski with him. And there is Sorensen, and the four of them have opened up a little bit of a gap over Logano, who's got a little bit of breathing room over uh, Toby Porter, Garvey, and the rest of the group. But this is a great four-car scrap for the lead as we're just about to complete lap 160. Middleton is definitely the wild card here, Greg. He maintains that lead, but remember, those guys running second, third, and fourth finished first, second, and third just a season ago. Sorensen actually got his, was, was on the pole here last year. Right. So he knows his way around here very quickly. Let's check in with Dave Burns. Well, uh, Greg, what about his restarts tonight? Have you liked Middleton's restarts? Very much. They've been very strong. What's I, up? I checked with his dad. I said, has he always been good at those? He said, yeah, ever since he was in Legends cars, he's had a great restart ability. So I guess if he was a drag racer, he'd have a low reaction time, huh? Apparently, it certainly pays off for him very, very strongly. But then you can see that I don't know whether it's you know, that and the, and the setup on the car, but uh, a couple laps into it, suddenly Pyle and uh, Sawinski and Sorensen able to reel him back in. And the way it looks at this stage, it almost looks like at this point, those three a little bit quicker maybe than Middleton. Those four cars obviously very equal. Every time we go back to green after caution, Joey Logano has a bit of trouble keeping up, but Greg, nobody behind Joey really to put any pressure on him for that fifth spot. Yeah, Porter was working him over pretty good before that caution, but he's tailed off just a little bit. And we've got, this is a absolutely sterling battle here for, well, look at Logano coming in right now. And uh, I would, uh, I'd wager pretty heavily that Logano will get there and that he'll slow up and then that'll allow Porter there. And uh, you can see number 55, Todd Cleaver is actually a lap down after his spin. Garvey would actually be next to the order. And Garvey is not going to want to waste a lot of time trying to get by a lap car. Now, also, let's keep in mind that I had alluded to maybe that Gary St. Amant was upset with Cleaver. And he wasn't. He was making those gestures. It was to the lap car. Here is Porter right now. And uh, we're on board with Cody Porter. Let's check in with Ken Stout. Hey, guys, I know that uh, Rob mentioned it before how Toby Porter went out first and had a little trouble on qualifying. Well, actually had a lot of trouble on qualifying, but I think the fact that you see him in sixth place right now is just phenomenal based on where he started. Keep in mind, he started off dead last here tonight. That is an awesome job. If he can hang on here, he can have a great finish, which is exactly what he needs to keep the sponsorship on the side of that car, guys. He certainly, Ken, does need a great finish. Listen to this. Thus far this season for Toby Porter, a young man expected to win races this year, 25th at Lakeland, 21st at Lanier, finished 10th at Kentucky, but was never really in the hunt. And then, of course, at Erie last weekend after qualifying sixth, a 24th place finish. So, Greg, he needs a strong run tonight badly. And he's so much better than that. I mean, you watch him, and this guy can race. There's no question about it. He's just had some abysmal luck this year. And he's caught him out badly. Here's what we're talking about now. I think Middleton really starting to hold up, and we've got a real pack forming at this stage. And uh, you can see Garvey has gone by. There is the number four, Stephen Light, and there's 55 Cleaver. He's doing the smart thing now. He's got all these guys battling for position on the lead lap. And yeah, he'd like to stay up front, but man, you just don't want to mess up these guys battling. He's just floating out wide, and if they can get by underneath, he's letting them do it. But we have a caution. And oh, that was uh, Trevor Stewart, number 91, the Grand Stay Suites entry, has uh, gone around, and it looks like it may have just been by himself. And we are now under caution, completing lap 172 as the field comes by. Stewart just waiting for the field to clear to get turned around and get back and going again. So I would suspect this is probably a fairly quick yellow flag, and there he goes. Trevor Stewart learned this team from the pit box last year. He was the crew chief, another driver behind the wheel, and said, I think I'll take a shot as the driver this season as a rookie driver. 
he too has had a uh, sort of a tough rookie season behind the wheel in terms of results, but uh, they've uh, made a lot of the shows, and, and right now that says an awful lot. Here we look at Brett Sontag, and he obviously is uh, running in the eight spot right now, and he's an aggressive driver. We had to ask him, what do you think? What's acceptable and what's not? In the heat of the moment, you know, you definitely don't want to dump somebody because it uh, makes you a bad guy, but uh, basically race people the way you want to be raced, and it usually turns out pretty good. On the job side, time is money. To save time, I need more than a tool. I need a system, the Rotozip spiral saw system. It cuts steel pipe, cuts laminate, cement board, does all sorts of tough jobs. With new features, the original just got tougher and faster. Rotozip, tough enough to tackle any job. Sunday night is the night for World Rally. The world's best drivers fight to keep their cool on a rocky car thrashing course. It's a very hard and tough rally. World Rally Championship Acropolis. Sunday, 9 Eastern, only on speed. At Bell, we've spent 50 years creating the most advanced helmets, and now we're bringing new cycling innovations to you. Through sophisticated research methods, we found that flat tires can create feelings of frustration. 185. 190. We're in the red zone. He's going to kill himself. This can decrease bicycling pleasure. So we created the flat blocker tube with self-sealing slime inside to instantly seal punctures. But we didn't stop there. Next, we ventured where no cycling company has dared to go before. Research showed that conventional seats can cause intense bruising and inflammation. He's in so much pain. Fascinating. So we developed the Geltech seat with three layers of comfort. To find out how to get Bell Geltech seats and flat blocker tubes, call now. No more flats, no more soreness from the innovators at Bell. If you're interested in finding out what's going on behind the scenes from Checker to Green in the real world of NASCAR Bush Series racing, check out NBS 24-7, Mondays, 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific, right here on Speed. Follows drivers Casey Kane, Tim Fedewa, and David Stremme in between the week's racing. Let's get down to Dave Burns, who's with, I believe, Robbie Piles, crew chief. That would be the Bill McGowan. Bill, he's kind of been riding back there, kind of trying him. Does he have enough to get around Middleton? Well, I don't know. He, he's, he's trying. We're trying to save our tires at the same time, so he doesn't really want to push the issue until it's time. He's got Kevin right there, so that's uh, he's keeping an eye on him at the same time. So uh, we're just kind of hoping things hold out and see what happens with 25 to go. Yeah, he called it, guys. We're getting ready to go green. Absolutely. Pace car is in, and watch Ready. for Middleton to see if Ready. he gets another green, one of those green, great green. jumps. Boy, not this time. Pyle read that beautifully. Middleton backed off just a little bit and then went to it, and Pyle was there. Contact! Little rub between Logano and Porter. Forces Porter out wide. Here comes Garvey. Mike Garvey aggressive on the bottom side of the racetrack. Contact between himself and Toby Porter. Porter does not want to give up that spot. Uh, Logano, I don't know what he did. I think he may have broken his tires loose just a little bit. And uh, ended up uh, sort of checking up to the inside. Now Porter under attack from Brett Sontag and trying to follow Sontag through. He's going to be 30 kittles. Porter turns in a little bit. Actually, it looked to me like he turned in and gave Sontag just a little nudge. And that pushed Sontag back. Sontag trying to stay tough and come in. Can't do it. He needs to be able to roll up the banking in the middle of the corners if he's going to make the run on Porter. So he'll have to regroup and give it another shot. Meanwhile, he's got a mirror full of Travis Kittleson. And as Kittleson checked up, number four, Stephen Light in the wall tub, de driver development car, ducked down inside, took a quick look, and that was not going to happen. Of course, behind them, this guy named Miller. Yeah, Butch just lurking in the shadows, waiting for his golden opportunity. But he's got to make the move. If he's got anything for these guys, we really need to see him come up through there. The front three, Greg, yep. really in a position to just kind of pace themselves and wait it out, battle it at the end. Well, when, you know, this, when Miller is in the last 50 laps of the race in the top five, you know he's going to be a player. And right now, he sits outside of the top 10 as we're closing in. 19 laps to go until that 200 lap mark. So you're absolutely right. And Ken Stout, uh, Butch is a little bit further back than I think he'd like to be right now. Well, uh, I don't know if 
they're getting the luck that they need here, guys. Deion Dano, of course, crew chief for Butch Miller said they've had a top three car the last three races. They just need a little bit of luck. It looked like he was charging hard to the front there for a little bit, but I don't know. There's a long ways to go. Don't count that cage you better now just yet. And of course, it is his birthday, and he just might get a present, guys. Well, that would be awfully nice to see him get that win and uh, to celebrate the birthday. As we go back up front, Middleton again, you know, this time didn't get that great start and uh, back to familiar territory even sooner with Pyle and Sawinski and Sante. I think Jay's beginning to labor just a bit out front, Greg. Earlier we saw under the last green flag stretch, the top four separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Now things have begun to tighten up. Joey Logano also struggling. He's getting some real pressure from Mike Garvey. Yeah, Garvey coming up and underneath him, and Dave, this young rookie, oh, wait a minute, we've got a new leader. Little bump and go there. Pile floats out, he and 74 Middleton touched. I thought Sawinski was gonna take advantage for just a minute, but uh, Pile actually, they touched his pile, went by him, and it was just a quick pump of smoke, and it uh, doesn't look like it really did anything to anybody. And Pile, now your leader, and this will be telltale, because if Pile starts to just drive away, and it's not gonna happen, because we have a caution that has come out. A caution has come out, so we're gonna go back very quickly and take a look and look at uh, seven. I don't know whether Middleton's thinking about pitting or thinking, well, maybe I can get back in front here. I think there's a little maybe uh, oh, communication. Look at that the damage, and it's Miller involved. Oh, boy. Right oh yeah, damage. broken right front. That, again, suspension uh, is broken up front. And he's going to obviously be ducking down to pits. That car is in serious, serious trouble right now. He's just hoping he can make it down to the pits. And uh, we'll see if he does. Meanwhile, as we go to break, we want to take you back and give you a look at just how it worked. And a little wiggle there by Middleton. Miles slips by. Daytona, the ultimate test of a motorcycle. Formula Extreme. The ultimate measure of 600 cc performance in the first formula extreme race ever held at daytona only one motorcycle mattered the honda cbr 600 rr first second third and fourth a total sweep total honda domination see the cbr 600 rr in the winner circle at your honda dealer now flip it this summer Rent as many games as you want. Flip it. For as long as you want. Play a game, then flip it for a new one. Flip it with the new Blockbuster Flip Card. Rent it, play it, flip it. 49 bucks is all you pay for three months of unlimited game. Game all summer for less than the price of the hottest new games. So get to Blockbuster now and flip it. Rent the hottest games today, like Van Helsing. Play it, then flip it for Siphon Filter, the Omega Strain, at Blockbuster now. ASARacing.com is your source for all the news and notes from the American Speed Association. Look up schedules, driver bios, statistics, history, and track information, along with research on the rest of the ASA Racing family. Check out and buy ASA fan gear only at ASARacing.com. To order tickets by phone, call 1-888-272-1020. That's 1-888-272-1020. ASA Racing, we build champions. but it certainly wasn't the one he was looking for. Apparently got into the wall all by himself, according to Dion Deneau. The right front totally hammered, locked up. They actually pulled it back behind Pitt Road as they pulled the right front wheel and tire off. Obviously, some of the suspension inside damage. They're looking at it now to see if they can at least get a wheel back on this thing and earn some more valuable points for the rest of the season, guys. Well, you know, it's very, very bad when they go behind the wall. Uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty serious, and obviously they're pretty concerned about it. And, you know, we had just talked about the fact that Butch needed to make the move, and he had just passed Light and Kittleson prior to hammering the wall. Yeah, he looked to be on the move, but uh, looks to have been for naught and problems. So we're going to step away again very quickly and be back for some more green flag action here in Mansfield, Ohio. Do you have the right truck? 
the best-selling half-ton regular and extended cab is now available as a crew cab. It's got more standard horsepower, more torque, and more towing capacity than Ford or Dodge half-ton crews. Introducing the new Silverado half-ton crew. It's the right truck from Chevy. Introducing TGI Friday's Fresh Summer Salads. Now there's even more to love about summer. Three great salads, three amazing...